document principle in SAP. The complete SAP, not only the FI module, but the complete SAP is based on this document principle. Whenever you do any business transaction irrespective of SAP module, the business transaction is always stored under the document number. Yes, it is always stored under the document number. And this is known as document principle in SAP. And we have got three concepts under this document principle. They are document type, document number and interval. So what does this document type means? Document type is a key which is used to distinguish between the different business transaction and to classify the accounting documents. So some of the common document types in FI are AA and the description for this document type AA is asset posting. AN means net asset posting, DR customer invoice, DZ customer payment, KA vendor document and KG which means vendor credit memo and we have got many other document types also. Don't worry I'll share you the trick to remember the document type and its name in SAP and it will be very helpful for your interview. So guys please observe carefully. There is a common naming convention followed in SAP for defining the document types in SAP. Okay there is always a common naming convention. Whenever you see a document type starting with ES, a document type starting with ES, it means that it is for general ledger. ES means it is for general ledger. D means it is for customer. What does the D means? It means it is for customer. K means it is for vendor and A means it is for asset. Okay, now for the second letter in the document type, we are done with the first letter. So what does the second letter means? In the second letter, what we have to understand is if the second letter is A, then it is document. A means document. R means invoice document. Z means payment document. I repeat, A means document. R means invoice document. Z means payment document. Let's take yes as the first letter and consider A as the second letter. So from the table, what does the S means? Yes means the general ledger. And what does A means? A means document. So SA means what? It is general ledger document. Got it? What does the SA means? It means general ledger document. For general ledger, we will not have any invoice of the payment document. So, there will be no SR or SG. It is as simple as that. Next, DA. DA means what? It is customer document. DR means customer invoice document. And DZ means customer payment document. Likewise, uh, let me give you some more examples. It is like KA. KA means vendor document. KR means vendor invoice document. And KZ means vendor payment document. Agree? Great. And one more example, AA. AA means what? Asset account document. So, for asset, we do not have any invoice or the payment. Correct, right? For the asset, we do not have any invoice or the payment. So guys, I hope you are now clear as how to identify the document from its document type. Done. The next concept we have under the document principle is the document number. What is it? It is the document number. The document number is the unique number in which the business transaction is posted in SAP. Yes, it is a unique number in which the business transaction is posted in SAP. So, let me give you an example for the importance of document number to be unique. Okay? So, in a company, let's say an vendor invoice document is created with the document number 1000, that is 1000 in the system. Okay? Consider, let it be vendor payment document. We are done with the vendor invoice document, right? Now, it is vendor payment document with the same document number 1000 in the system. 
So now, whenever the customer tries to approach you with any query related to his business transaction, then the person who is trying to resolve his query will need a lot of information from customer before identifying his transaction. So this results in customer dissatisfaction and also the difficulty in account process. Correct, right? It always results in the customer dissatisfaction and also a very, very difficulty in account process. Okay, as a SAP FI consultant, you have configured the document numbers to be unique for the document types. That means the system will generate the unique document number for each business transaction. Does this solve the business issue in document numbering? Answer me, does this solve the business issue in the document numbering? Okay, let's consider a scenario. Business has created the five documents with its document type and the document number as below. See, the document type is SA and its document number is 1. And next comes the document type DA whose document number is 2. And for document type KA, the document number is 3 and for the document type SA the document number is 4 and for the document type DA the document number is 5. So now at the end of financial year the auditor who doing the audit of the company requests the document of each document type as a separate for final computing. So guys how can you identify it? How can you identify it? Yes, you can identify it, but it is not at all easy. It is not at all easy. Hence, to solve this challenge, we assign the number range to each document type. What we do? We assign the number range to each document type. With the use of the number range, you define within which number range the document numbers to be picked up while creating an SAP system. Okay, let me give you an example. You can assign the number range as 0 to 500 for the document type SA and 501 to 1000 for the document type DA and 1001 to 1500 for the document type KA. So, whenever each business transaction is posted, its respective document number will be picked from the mentioned range in SAP. So, for the business users, it will be very easy to identify the document type just by looking at the document number which has been created. Okay, let me give you an example here. If the user sees the document number as 10, he easily identifies the document type as ESA. So, Document number interval can either be external or internal. If I have assigned the document type number interval as internal, then the system picks up the document type automatically from the specified number interval in the very systematic manner. When I say external, it means the user has to give the document number manually from the specified interval. In SAP, we normally use the document range as internal for the most of the cases and the use of the document range as external in very rare case. But we do have an option. Yes, we do have an option. Here, I'll give you an example where we use as an external. Okay, I'll give you an example where we will be using as external. In one of the implementation which I have worked, for creating the vendor invoice, the business has linked the SAP system to another system. Okay, That means the business was generating the invoice in a separate legacy software. Then after its creation, the business were posting the vendor invoice in SAP with the same document number as a legacy system. In such scenario, we set the number interval as external numbering interval. What we do? We set the number interval as external numbering interval. Another very important thing to remember is the document number range is not created with the transport request. Yes, the document number range is not created with the transport request. We have to configure it in individual clients separately. We also have an option to create it in a transport request. But most of the cases we do it manually in each individual client. This is very important even from the perspective of your interview. So 
understand this it is very much important so guys now let's see how we can configure the document type in sap and assign a number range to it shall we move ahead good 